special issue of healthcare management forum is about the mental health applications of the inter-eye assessment instruments. The guest editor for the special issue was Dr. Edgardo Perez. This issue focuses on how management decision makers in different parts of the mental health system can use these data to inform decision making. InterEye is a not-for-profit network of over 90 researchers and clinicians from 35 countries that do research on the development and application of comprehensive assessment systems. In Canada, the University of Waterloo School of Public Health and Health System is the lead organization representing InterEye, and we've had over 40 graduate students complete their graduate theses on research related to InterEye instruments. All the papers in the special issue include co-authors that are either faculty members or former PhD students of the School of Public Health and Health Systems at the University of Waterloo. The NRI mental health instruments are an integrated mental health information system. They are assessment systems that can be used to inform decision making for persons receiving mental health services and for people with mental health needs across the life course. Intri instruments are mandated in nine provinces and territories in Canada. We worked very closely with the Ontario Hospital Association and the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to develop the first generation assessment system for inpatient psychiatric services. The Canadian Institute for Health information is a very important partner. In addition, Canada Health InfoWay has identified the inter -eye mental health instruments as part of the Canadian approved standard for the electronic medical record. Since 2005, KaiHai has been supporting the implementation of inter -eye inpatient mental health assessment instruments in Canada. That support has expanded into community mental health. KaiHai works with jurisdictions to collect and report on healthcare data electronically, and we provide the training to use inter -eye outputs for treatment planning and system-level decision-making. From a clinical perspective, we can use these assessments for identifying needs of persons with mental illness. We can use it to develop care plans. And we have a series of embedded outcome measures that can be used to track their progress. There's also a, a variety of important management applications. For example, we can use it to study resource allocation and for evaluating the quality of mental health services. Gender is important in mental health care because men and women are affected differently by health issues, service utilization, and overall mental health care needs. For example, women in forensic psychiatric inpatient settings demonstrate more severe psychiatric needs. As well, men and women with similar levels of aggression, the system places greater levels of restriction uh, in freedom of movement among men. A patient is designated alternate level of care when their needs would be better supported in another setting, such as at home or in supportive housing, but they continue to remain at the hospital. For patients, an ALC designation can mean isolation from family, friends, and the community, and can lead to more difficult transitions into less structured environments. For the hospital, the average cost of ALC is $450 per day, and for each patient, that is on average $7,200. ALC can also mean a reduction in inpatient beds, which leads to less access to those beds by patients with more acute care needs. The paper by Dr. Ramon Tempe from the Montfort Hospital in Ottawa is a really important paper from a policy and management perspective. What this paper did is to look at the experience of Francophone Ontarians at the early stages of admission to psychiatric hospitals. The paper showed that Francophones were substantially less likely to be in contact with psychiatrists on a daily basis in the first three days of their stay compared to um, other language groups. The paper by Barb Pisengrilli and colleagues looked at how police officers, emergency room staff, and inpatient mental health services staff could use a common approach to assessment and screening the Inter-Eye Brief Mental Health Screener helps officers identify indicators of serious mental disorder. But not only that, it helps them articulate it in health language when they bring that person to the hospital. The Brief Mental Health Screener is the first step towards developing a more collaborative approach between our two systems. So as more provinces and territories and other countries begin to adopt Inter-Eye Mental Health Assessment instruments, it provides us the opportunity to do cross-national comparisons of the experience of persons receiving mental health services. Second, we're doing new research around a quality of life survey that is reported by mental health patients themselves to talk about their experience in terms of day-to-day -day life, their interactions with staff, their views about what lies ahead for them uh, in terms of their recovery from mental illness. 